Welcome to a demonstration of some of the technology behind the Community Network Quick Start program. We wanted to show you some of the ways that we do an analysis so that you would have a sense of what you'd be getting if you sign up uh, for us to give you a sense of what it would cost to, to build the fiber to all of your communities or a wireless network or what would probably be most common, which is a hybrid network of fiber and wireless. So you can get a sense of these tools and how it'll show you a competitive analysis of where there already are some connections and then where our tool uh, would suggest fiber is put and wireless is put and then how we can dynamically change that to make it more customized and give you the kind of network that you're looking at. Um, we can give you cost constraints and things like that to try and maximize the benefit to the community based on the amount of money that may be available to build the network. So now I'm going to turn it over to Glenn, the, the wizard behind the technology. He's going to give you a sense of how this works. And if you have any questions, you should always feel free to contact us uh, through the Community Network Quick Start page, which is at cnquickstart.com, cnquickstart.com. I'm going to demonstrate to you how we go about doing a particular design study for a uh, particular city. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select... Uh, essentially the county in which I live and now we have all the data necessary to do the analysis for that particular county. We see that there are 1,305 census block groups in there. It's 604 square miles, 27,000 people, 12,000 households and according to the FCC data there's about 5,400 households that have inadequate services by the current FCC standards. So what we're going to do, by example, is design, take a look at um, who's providing services to that community at this time. So we come up with a display like this, which shows us the outline of the county uh, by block group and the service providers in that area. So this is the Sur County, this uh, beige thing over there. And then we can see where ISPs are providing services. So, for example, that area in blue, that's Cannon Valley Telecom. CenturyLink is on the eastern and southern part of the county. Comcast is on the far northeast. One of these has a particular service area, so we can see the kinds of coverage that's available. Or, if we want to go into greater detail, we can see the kinds of coverage that are available in any particular block group. So, for example, in this block group here, there's eight providers for the seven households in that block group, and they're listed essentially in this section right here. So now that we've got a sense for the services available to the area, we're going to define a hypothetical hybrid network. And what this does is this designs an optimum fiber optic network for that community based on, that. Based on those presumptions. <clears throat> The areas in green are fiber areas. The areas in red are yet to be defined but are presumed to be fixed wireless. And then we can see that the fiber connections here without the um, backhaul is going to be sitting around $6,555,000 with approximately $1.7 million of in-home equipment to that fiber selected houses. So of the 10,800 households in that area, we've been able to connect 6,800 with fiber um, for that $6.5 million. So the next thing we might want to do is we might want to adjust uh, some of the connectivity issues. So for example, if we find anything that's uh, isolated that shouldn't be, we can change it um, from fiber, from fixed wireless to fiber and back just by clicking over the area. So we can make arbitrary or intelligent design changes to this network model as, as we need to go through that. Connectivity being the most important issue of this. Once we've done all the changes we need to do on the fiber design, now we want to overlay a fixed wireless network on top of that to cover the rest of the households as best as terrain permits. So we use that design and we put a series of optimally placed towers over the remaining design. Each of these towers is shown in red and has a particular um, number associated with it. And what we have to do at this point in time is we have to find out for the placements that we did, did we do these correctly and what type of coverage are we going to have? So I have to move something out of the way here a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at what the ground clutter and terrain characteristics are for these towers defined on that network. So we process the towers, 
And what are we doing? We're saying that there's approximately 19 towers that are going into this network. <clears throat> and what it's seeing is that of the 4,044 households that could have been covered by fixed wireless, the terrain and ground clutter permit us to cover approximately 3,125. And to give you a sense for some of the detail that we're looking at here, as we switch the map over to, say, terrain mode here, we can see that as we get into river valleys and whatnot, we do have some drop-off from the RF propagation. This is a, on a bluff, and this is in a valley, and we just can't see down into that valley. So we may want to adjust the position of a tower and then reprocess and see if we can do any better. <laughs> All right, so we can reposition any of these towers to a better location. So, for example, I'm going to move this location, and then we'll reprocess all of our towers. And processing this type of data can be pretty time-consuming as far as a computer is concerned, because we're processing 19 towers, and each one of them has a 3-mile radius of coverage. So we have to look at every one of the um, target areas to see what kind of population coverage we get out of that. And the results have come up like that. Slightly better coverage for that tower. We can keep tweaking with that indefinitely. But... The other aspect of this is we can see that in addition to the, um, was it five point no six point five million dollars of fiber, we're going to require an additional four hundred eighty four thousand dollars of uh, tower equipment and another one million dollars of home um, customer premise equipment. So there you get a sense of what we can offer with the Community Network Quick Start, where we're using the best data that's available. And, and yes, we're all aware that, that the data does often overstate the availability, but it will give you a sense of where at least the FCC thinks there is competition. Um, and we're always updating that data um, with the best available to make sure that we're giving the best possible advice. Um, this is something that's very versatile. We can change it based on your needs to make sure that the right amount of fiber is getting in or that we're hitting the right target amount of available money to uh, be spent on the network. Um, and then this does come also with uh, some advice and best lessons that we've seen from other communities um, in terms of how you might go about doing this or you know what kind of financing would be appropriate for the kind of network that you're doing. So we're just trying to we're just trying to make sure that you have the best advice possible when you're getting started so that you can move forward quickly uh, and uh, have some reasonable ballpark guesses as to what a network may cost and then that you're not wasting your time spinning your wheels. Thanks for your time today.